Hey everybody, I'm back. The guy is done mowing <laughs> and um, I'm ready to start painting our lemons in a bowl. So I'm going to tag you guys again on this video. Maybe it's better that we had the drawing portion separated. Um, Teresa said it looked complicated. I don't mean to make it complicated. I hate when I hear that. Um, really, all we did was draw a rectangle on the ellipse portion only. Just draw a rectangle where your ellipse is, and then divide the rectangle into three parts and draw an X in the two end boxes. And then you've got more reference points to help you draw your ellipse onto your canvas. That's all we did giving yourself a little extra um, grid work, so to speak, to help you position it. So, okay, I've got, I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you my setup. Whoa. <laughs> There's my setup. Of course, this is at a different angle. But, um, you know what, let me see if I can get it at the angle that I'm looking at it at. And my camera doesn't seem to wanna, you know what, I'll just take it out of the mount and show you. Well, that's not going to work either because I wanted to show you what happens when I change the lighting. <sighs> Such a pain. Hold on. Charlie just came down. Oh, God. Huh, I tried to turn the... here. Okay, back to this. So what I wanna show you, hi Patsy. What I wanna show you with this, cause I don't think I really went into this at all last time, I'm sorry. But um, I turned my other lighting off. I do have a window. Um, I have a window over there, obviously, natural light coming in and um, this is just a cart. You could use a table or something. And this is a board, this is a, um, a three-sided demo board or what a presentation board from Dollar Tree that I have in there, okay? And what is really cool is how I can affect the lighting. So it's not that angle, but let me see if I can get it a little lower. It's more like it's close to that angle. So if I if I move this board a little bit, move the light further away or closer, the closer it is, the stronger the shadows are. I don't know why that light is showing so strong on there. It looks much better in person. Let me get it out of the frame. Now the light is really far away and it's kind of more diffused, which I don't necessarily want. So um, anyway, this is a clip-on lamp. Let me show you the clip-on lamp. That's what, the, that's what it looks like. I've got a, day, a big daylight bulb in there. It's a very, very big one. And um, I'm not expecting you to get something like this, but you can get a clip-on lamp for $10 at a hardware store, you know. And the hard part is finding something to clip it to. That's the biggest challenge. But anyway, this does look much better in person. It doesn't have that glare, of course. Um, but what you want to do is um, get the shadow. You want shadow behind. Boy, it's really so distracting. You want shadow behind your lemons. No, maybe if I do that, now it's not angling towards the um, phone, camera phone at all. And if I move this, move this back a little bit deeper in there, and see how this side of the panel is casting shadow behind the lemons? That's what I want you to do. I want you to get that shadow. You can play with this a little bit. Hopefully you can find um, a way to make this work for you with your particular setup. Um, you don't want too much shadow. You want, you want to cast the light 
so that the lemons have light on them, but there's shadow behind them, if that makes sense. And this has a little lip here to help me out. So anyway, that's your setup, okay? Um, I need to fix this a little bit better. I'm gonna turn the camera back around. Um, and you know, you, uh-oh, poor network connections for a second. Yeah, you can go back and watch that later. Of course, Patsy, that just showed how to, how to draw it onto your canvas. And I would suggest you use eight by 10 and then print it out and put the nine square grid like this uh, onto your printout and onto your canvas so that you can exactly draw the thing. If you have any questions about that, please post them below. I did this demo in the last demo also of talking about this grid thing and taking the photo and duplicating it and all of that stuff. So um, now I'm going to turn the camera down and talk a little bit about uh, what I want to do is mix up all my colors. And I'm going to be looking at my still life from life. Um, but I'll have the camera pointing down on my um, palette and my painting while I'm working. So forgot how I had that all set up last time. Now, the paints that are in my palette right oh crap, lousy connection it's saying. Um, all right, let me adjust my camera. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the only way I can lift this thing. It's so hard to, uh, <laughs> to do. So here's my palette. I need to, let me just take a second to fix my still life lighting back to where I had it. I shouldn't have moved it at all, but that's probably good enough. Yeah, I think I have it just about right. Okay, so here's my palette from last week. This is my Masterson Stay Wet palette. And of course, I don't really want these colors anymore, but I don't wanna throw them away. So I'm gonna put them over in a side pile. I guess you never know, I might, I might use this for something, but you can just scrape all this into a pile on the side there. So that's what I'm doing putting it all over there. And that, that might be a nice um, neutral that I use for something else. Um, oh, I forgot to get paper towels. Hold on, I need paper towels. Okay, so um, I'm gonna pre-mix my colors. I'm gonna try and wipe my palette off a little bit more. That might distract me too much. If you feel like this paper is gonna distract you too much, you can just transfer all of this onto, you know, a new, a new sheet of palette paper. But I don't know, I like trying to reuse it. So I'm really wiping it down so that I won't have blue in everything that I do today. Although it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, I guess, because I do have blue in my painting. Okay, so um, I probably need some new paints out. 
and from you know that with our setup we always have our um, our white on one side our yellow our red and our blue and of course you know our regular palette what colors those are you should know that I like to put white out in a few different pieces because you know white just gets so dirty and I am using white today in that bowl. Um, I think I, I just might have enough yellow there. Um, I think I might have enough paint out actually. I think I do want to use a, um, a gray. So let me grab that. I've got neutral gray eight that I'm going to put out on my palette. Oh, actually, I've got some gray right there. I forgot about it. Never mind. Got gray. <laughs> Didn't even see that right there. Just a convenience color. All right, so main thing I want to get, I don't have a color printout. Let me pull some more paper towels off of here. And of course, I'm going to mix um, my yellows. Uh, I'm going to mix a background shade and I'm going to mix a few colors for my bowl. When I start with the bowl, I'm going to paint the white part of the bowl itself. You know, if you've got a pattern on yours, and I challenge you to paint, you know, a bowl of lemons in a bowl that has a little bit of a pattern on it. And when we start out, we're just going to paint the bowl shape. Um, this, is ups this is not the right way. Am I upside down? Yeah, I know, I didn't do this. Sorry. I always do that, don't I? So, um, we're gonna paint the bowl itself, the white bowl first, and then we're gonna add the pattern after and we're gonna really simplify it. The main subject here is the lemons. So, um, okay, I've got a bunch of paper towels ready to just so I can just grab them. Oops. Ooh, that wasn't good. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna push this over here and make myself some room, hopefully. So um, here is my oh sorry I don't like that shadow falling across there that's no good all right maybe I need to do this and just bring the palette over when I can to show you the colors I'm mixing very hard to figure out exactly how to make all this fit. Okay, I think this might be decent. Okay, so here's my drawing on my canvas. Um, I really wish that I had kind of, you know, put maybe a little bit of a ground on there, but then again, maybe not because it is a white bowl. You know, a ground being a color over the whole thing. But um, anyway, I didn't do that. And um, so normally you can do this in pencil or you, you know you're drawing in pencil or with a diluted paint um, and so now i'm ready to get rid of these grid lines you know all these lines that i don't need anymore i'm going to going to take off of here. Sounds like somebody's doing some yard work. I'm going to erase this halftone line here too.
And did you know that you can, um, with your kneaded eraser, you can, you can kind of roll it across something or dab to lighten? I don't know if you knew that. But some of those lines, sorry, phone call, sorry about that. You'd think that my daughter would know when I go live, but I guess she doesn't. I hope everything's okay. All right, guys, I answered it since she called back. Everything's okay. I'll just call her back later. Oh, everything's going wrong today. <laughs> Not really. All right, so let's go ahead and start painting in um, the bowl. Or, or no, let's mix up our colors. So I'm going to at least have this here for us to look at. Um, well, I'm going to put this here. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with my yellow, and it's funny, when I'm looking at this, the this lemon looks more of a, this yellow. It doesn't look as lemony because the light is closer to the light. These over here are much cooler yellow. So um, I actually happen to have a little bit of green there. So maybe that'll be what I what I use. This is gonna look a lot cooler. I could probably just use this straight lemon yellow. But here's the issue now. I have half of it in shadow. So the challenge is gonna be figuring out what color to add to um, keep it still, still yellow, but to give it a darker value. Yeah, life, <laughs> I know. So I'm gonna try this neutral gray. I have a feeling that there's blue in this. I'm gonna do a little test over here. And, and you know, usually when we add a darker value, there's blue in it. And so this is the weird color that I get. And I'm gonna hold it up and look at my painting. And actually, that's not bad. I'm holding it up and comparing it to what I'm seeing over there. It's a little too green, but I think I think I can work with it. So I'm gonna mix that all together. I don't wanna to get too, too, too um, dark or too green with it. Okay. And then the straight lemon yellow would be my um, light color right there. I might even add a little bit of white to that. I'm not sure yet. Okay, then the other lemon, I'm gonna use this yellow, believe it or not. I probably need to cool it down just a bit, so I'm gonna add a little bit of my cool yellow to it. So it's not real, it's not, it's not gonna be sunflower yellow, because it's not, it's a lemon. Okay, so I think that'll work. So anytime I'm trying to match a color, you know, I just mix it and then kind of hold it up and compare it to what I'm looking at over there, and I think that's gonna be a good start. Um, but now I need to make a shadow color of it. So I'm gonna take half of that and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add the gray, a little bit of gray to that. Now this needs to be, needs to be a warmer shadow. Sorry about the noise. So, Charlie, no. Charlie, leave it. Oh my goodness, this is crazy today. I'm gonna to add a tiny, tiny bit of my cadmium red to warm up this shadow uh, side. Because I don't want this shadow to be the same as that shadow. I mean, it's not going to be anyway because it was a different yellow, but I think adding a little red is going to help that. And I think that's going to be good enough. Just think of it in terms of, you know, how cool or warm is it and try and get that comparison going when you're doing your mixing. You want to see the difference between, you know, between them. This definitely looks cooler than this, and this is a darker value. Um, okay, and then I've got my bowl. So for my bowl, I can probably just use my, my gray, right? And I could probably add a smidge of, um, I, can, I want to make it look cooler in the shadow, okay? Cooler in the shadow, so to cool, it's already cool. If I need to cool it down more, I can add a little bit more blue to it. Probably the ultramarine blue as opposed to the um, phthalo blue. That would be too much, I think. Um, 
I'm gonna add the tiniest bit. Okay, and I th I'm not sure if this value is too dark. Probably is, so I'm gonna take some white, add some white to it. This is gonna be my bowl shadow color that I'm gonna start with. Maybe a little more blue, ultramarine blue. Okay, let's hold this up. It actually looks pretty good. It's something to start with. Um, now the white, the light part of my bowl, I do not want to use straight white. You only use straight white on your highlights, you know, your hard highlights. There's only a highlight right here on the lip. That's the only white. The rest of it has got to be a little bit darker. They call that saving your whites. I'm going to paint a lemon later. This is very helpful. Oh good, I'm glad. Um, so you always want to save your whites for the, for the absolute highlights only. Um, all right, so, I mean, I could go ahead and make another white shade for the rest of my bowl, and maybe that one's going to be just a little bit warmer of a uh, white part of the bowl. So, so these are these subtle little things that people don't really know you're doing, but they make all the difference. We added blue, ultramarine blue for the cool part of the white shadow bowl and to make for the warm side you can add anything you could add yellow orange red you know whatever you think you see over there um, i think i'm just going to add the tiniest bit of um, red okay and it might look a little pink to you but i guarantee when you put this down it's going to make sense it's going to look it's going to look warmer that's what you want and I don't really want to put yellow in this white bowl because my, I want my lemons to pop more. If I have yellow in the bowl color, um, the, the yellow in the lemon won't stand out as much. So it's, it's a very, very, very subtle pink, believe it or not, but that's okay. That's the warm part of the bowl. The, you know, the bowl is a warmer, it's warmer where the light's hitting it. That's how you want to paint. You want to paint temperature. All right. Um, and then we've got our background color, which is a, basically a brown. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just grab my burnt umber. I don't have that. Color. My burnt umber. And um, put some of that out. And same thing, I'm gonna make a, um, I'm gonna grab some white first, some burnt umber. And in the part, in this part over here, it's a lot lighter, it becomes almost peachy tan color. So I've got white and burnt umber, but it, it doesn't look right yet it needs to be warmer so i'm going to add a little of my cad red it needs to look yellower than that so i'm going to add my yellow and that might work it's a start anyway then i need a shadow color i could possibly use just all this straight up burnt umber. Maybe I'm gonna use some of this blue I happen to have over there. If it goes a little greenish, I don't really think I'll mind. Um, and that looks pretty good. It's, it's not super dark, but I can always make it darker. I don't really want the background to be so dark that it, that it really overpowers the, the lemons. So I'm not gonna go quite as dark as what I see see there. All right, I think we're ready to go. So we're just gonna block in the colors that we've mixed now. We got it drawn, we've got our colors mixed, and now's the fun part, right? Okay, so um, I'm gonna get my biggest brush, and I always dip it in water first. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and start on, um, let's start on the background, get this dark background color in here and just kind of see what that's going to look like. I'm going near the lemons, but not right on the lemons yet. You know, and you can kind of scrub this in. It's just a little bit warmer over there because it's maybe that's just because it's a bigger area. But I might um, add just the tiniest bit of, of red back in and make, make it just a little bit lighter over here. It's a very subtle shift. I don't know if you can even see it very, very subtle shift. But I think where the lemons are, I want it to be cooler, cool against warm, so it pops a little more. Okay, let's get a little bit of this foreground happening here so I can get some, some blendy stuff going on maybe. not going right up to that line. I'm not trying to be really super accurate right now. This is just roughly blocking in colors. It does get darker over here. super dark over here. So it did need to go darker. Okay. And then we've got this whole shadow over here. It's going to come off this side, kind of, sort of. I can always come back in and tweak all that. I just feel like I need to get some value down there to compare everything else to. this way on this one. Okay, pinch this out and put my light background color in. That shadow, I know I'm going to come back in and refine that quite a bit more, but um, that's probably good enough for us to get started. Now it is a lot lighter right here, so I'm going to go ahead and lighten that up. I'm going to add white to this and just really look for where it's super light. Oh, it went gray on me. That's probably good enough for now. It's very wet, it's gonna keep blending, so. I said that and then I went back into it again. <laughs> and there's a hint back here, very subtle hint of this light coming through back here. Super subtle. Okay. 
So we have sort of a setup there. It's not perfect, but that's okay. And I can come back in, I'm gonna use a different brush, and I can actually take away this right here that I don't need on my bowl. I just wet it gently, wipe my brush off, and pick up this color that I don't want on there. So it's there a little bit, but that's okay. All right, so now we got that in there. Also, this went a little too deep back here. So I'm gonna soften that. You know, you've got this window of time where the acrylic paint is not, you know, fully dry yet. And you can still manipulate it. Actually, I should have brought that background closer. So now that I've got a smaller brush, back in and refine that edge just a little bit more. also down here with a smaller brush I can be you know a little more accurate about what's going on here okay so that defined it quite a bit better right this is still dipping into the bowl a little too much, so I'm just gonna clean the tip of my brush out really good. Oops, I just dripped water. <laughs> now, if I try to wipe up that water, it's gonna remove too much paint from the background, so we don't wanna do that. So I have to leave that drip there. I don't know if you can even see it. There's a drip right there. <laughs> Gotta leave it. All right, so now, um, since all these edges are wet, I'm going to go ahead and work on my lemon, the lemon. So I'm going to use this cool um, color that I made for the lemons. And of course, it's going to look crazy green. It does not look right, but it's what I'm going to start with. There's even a hint of it in here. Okay. I do need it to be a little bit darker. I'm looking at my reference. The top of it right here is, is quite a bit darker. So let's try adding more of our gray to it. And just see we can get away with that. We might be able to. And I'm just doing simple shadow shapes there. Really what we're trying to do is just find values. Actually, this, this value seems much better than what I had. So I'm gonna put this in on this half of the lemon right here. So I made it quite a bit darker. Okay, good. Now I don't wanna lose my drawing, so I'm gonna clean this edge up right here. remember that's still wet and I can still lift it off of this front lemon 
just lift it with a wet brush, wipe that paint off your brush and go back and, you know, clean it up again a little bit. And, you know, don't be shy on grabbing a new paper towel, you know. If your paper towel starts to get all dirty and it's too full of paint, then it's not gonna work for you when you go to dab. So just grab another paper towel. Don't be cheap about paper towels. Okay, um, so now let's get the, um, the bright side of this back lemon on there. I'm gonna try this really bright, cool um, color. Might be too much, I don't know. And there's a hint of it over here. And it kinda doesn't look cool enough. It looks too warm. I don't know if you can tell. Actually, I grabbed the wrong color. Shoot, that's okay, I'll come back in. I grabbed my wrong color off my palette, that's why. Here's my cool le cool, yellow, cool lemon over here. <laughs> oh yeah, that's better. So I wiped my brush off you know, wipe your brush off when you're blending. So that you, because with blending, it's all about what's in your brush. You know, you put down your shadow color first, then you put down your lighter color, you know, and put down this one. And then when you want to blend, take the paint out of your brush while it's really wet and just go back and forth a couple times. Don't blend it to oblivion. All right, so now let's do the foreground lemon and hopefully I'll pick the right color this time. So this is the shadow color for the foreground lemon. And I really want it, this, this isn't dark enough either, I don't think, but it really goes like this. There is a lot of reflected light going on in here, but I'm gonna try not to let myself get too confused by all that. Soften this edge right away. Okay. And then here is the front side of my lemon. I'll just lay this in there. Okay, and then it's even lighter right here, which isn't showing enough. So I'm gonna add a little white to this. A lot of paint on there. Okay, so we'll let that sit for a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if these colors are right because I don't have a map of the whole thing yet, you know? And uh, right now, this is just kind of figuring out the values because values are actually more important than color, you know? So that's what we're trying to get. So um, now we want to get the bowl in, right? So we've got our, um, let's see, this is my warm part of the bowl. I'm going to go ahead and lay this in. And you can't even really tell that it's, you know, white paint. But I got it on there, kind of, kind of thick, decent amount of it on there. I'm going to also put that down here. Let's 
And then also on the back of the bowl, back here, this is very important to get this at the same time. This is the light hitting the back of the bowl. And I'm going into the half tone where it's gonna be shadow so that I can blend later. Okay, so now I'm gonna clean all this off my brush and grab my, my shadow side. Oops, I just smeared a bunch of yellow over there from my paper towel. See how our paper towels can cause us problems? <laughs> so let me see if I can lift that out really quick with another brush. Um, not really, because it was kind of wet still. So we'll just kind of leave it. Uh, I'm going to lift that out of there too. What the heck? Shouldn't have done that, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll fix it. Um, so let me grab my shadow side of the bowl. That's going to come in over here. And I have to figure out where that's going to end. And honestly, I think it... I think it does come up way over here. Kind of kind of matches with that lemon. And of course it, it kind of comes around the bottom of the bowl too. And this is almost all in shadow. There's like an angle here. So then it's definitely darker over here. This is shadow back here, all of this. And this is gonna define our lemon shape. But I, I do still have a pretty big brush going on here, so. Kind of have to get in there with another smaller brush. Okay, pinch this out, and I'm going to do this blend here really quick while it's still, you know, wet. And it gets a little bit darker down there, so I'm going to grab a darker value. I need an even darker gray. And I do have a five. So if you don't have if you don't have a darker value of gray, this is a neutral gray five. You can add the tiniest bit of, of your black. not as dark over on this side. And I definitely need a smaller brush for a second. And I'm going to use my full on five for this part. Same thing back here, just going to give it a little extra push of dark. Just get it a little bit darker back there. So this shadow shape does kind of come up here just a little bit, defines this lip. 
And that, you know, that helps. It helps that I'm able to come back in and do this because I can draw the edge of my um, bowl then. So that's what I'm saying. It's, it really helps to be able to control the lighting on your bowl. And I'm going to use some of this back here in this little this little section of the bowl is showing. Don't forget about that little piece. It might be too dark, but if it is, I can always go back in. Okay. Um, and then let's see how this shadow ends. It's right about here, I guess. a little darker over here. Okay. Now I can also use some of this gray dark value in here. There's this little part of the lemon. And there's actually um, a line here, like a shadow line here. I didn't notice till just now. So I'm kind of going darker. just to give this a little more, you know, oomph. Looking at, I'm squinting down and looking at all these, you know, shadowy shapes in here using my straight gray. And now I'm gonna mix it in with my yellow, shadow yellow color. So it's like that mid-tone five being mixed with my um, shadow yellow color. You know, because you you do that, you, you mix up a color that, you know, is within that realm, but then there's gonna be additional, you know, nuances that you have to do. want to make sure I get this big shape in here. Don't don't lose sight of the really big shape, the way it the way it goes. All right. this is really dark back there. Compare the values, you know. I mean, this is a lot darker back there than this. I may have this a little too dark. So, so what I'm doing now is I'm just stopping and doing a little comparison thing. This could be lighter, I'm realizing. The whole front of the bowl could be lighter, which that's surprising to me. Um, okay, so let's add a little more white to this. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter. I'm gonna add white to this gray color that I had. I think I wanna add just a little bit of um, blue to it, believe it or not, ultramarine blue. Just to kinda of gray, it, gray it down a little bit. Wow, I feel like it could even be whiter. And there is some reflected light coming in over here too. OK, 
Okay, then I'm gonna make this part lighter also, my shadow part. And that really helped a lot. Now the back of the bowl looks as dark as it should be. And this isn't really that light right here. I've darkened this just a little bit too. Okay, so that looks pretty good. This looks really light down here, I'm realizing. It looks so white next to that um, background. So I am gonna put straight white on top of this. And then I'm gonna use straight white on this rim right here, just to kind of get this part separated out. Sometimes you can just use the tip of your brush to do this. That's another little nice trick because it can be really hard to get that line. You could use a liner brush. And remember, it's, it's wide at the edge and then it gets thinner. So you're probably going to have to go back in and you know, adjust this a little bit. So it is a lot to have to do all at once. But now's the time to do that because it's wet and you can blend it still. Um, all right, and yeah, that looks pretty good. So again, I'm looking at the values mostly. I need to clean this up right here but I needed that lighter anyway. So I'm gonna add some white to that background and you know, just hit this part again. Now I'm noticing that it is darker than the bowl, so I went a little too light there. But now I can use this color to come back in and define this edge. bit better for the shadow. It was a little too light. Yeah, I mean, I need to be able to see the, the bottom of the bowl from the Oh, hey, Denise. Need to be able to see the table differentiated from the bowl. I had them almost the same value. Although when I look on here, they really are very close, you know. But you can tweak that and make that work for you. I mean, I didn't like it that close. I want to be able to differentiate it. And then I've decided, too, I want the background back here a lot darker. So, um, and I think I want it to, I want the, the lemons to be really super yellow. So the opposite of yellow is purple. So I want to make that background more of a purple. I just now decided that. So I'm going to get my ultramarine blue, my, um, I want it to be a, a dull purple. So I'm going to use my cad red, ultramarine blue, maybe some of this gray back there. And let's see what happens if we put a purplish color back here. 
that might be too vivid still. But um, it's, it's certainly a lot more interesting, right? I could, I could mix a little bit of my um, burnt umber in this too and make it more of a periwinkle. That's kind of nice. Yeah, I think that's a lot more interesting. I just did not really love that color that we had going on. So we went a little bit bluish, purplish, bluish. And it'll go with my blue that I'm gonna have in the bowl too. I do want it darker, so let's get a little darker. Yeah, that's gonna give me a lot more of that contrast that I want. And really this shadow comes down to about here, which that's gonna help, you know, make this bowl really pop also. Bring that shadow down a little bit more. needing more paint. Oh, you want to try and work quickly. This is starting to get just a little bit tacky on me. Oh, I made it way too red. But that's okay. using the tip of my brush to define that edge. I like that warmth, what that did over there. I actually think that kind of helped. shadow coming in over here. Right. And the shadow is darker and cooler as it's closest to the bowl. Now 
I got a lot of dark paint in my brush. I don't want to continue pulling all this dark paint all the way through. So I'm going to look at my subject and decide, you know, where is the shadow dark and where does it change? And, you know, usually it's just a little ways out. Like maybe that much. Okay, and then I'm going to wipe some of this out. Get a little bit of water on my brush and now I can blend, blend this back a little bit. You can't, you don't have too much time to do too much with this. So keep it simple and move on. Don't get too obsessive about it. Okay. Same thing on this side. I could probably soften this just a little bit. So there's not much in my brush, but it's, I wet the tip of it. And I just did one swipe and probably can't do another. So that's it for the background. You know, I think I'm just gonna leave that. I like that, that's not bad. I like the purple's a lot more interesting. And um, okay, so maybe now I'm ready to go back in, reassess my, my lemons back here. Um, and they're definitely cooler. So remember last time I, I used the wrong, <laughs> I used the wrong yellow, I think. So here's my really, my cool, my cool yellow and a little bit of my, here's my cool yellow and a little bit of this shadow uh, color. I really need to cool that all down. That back lemon. Okay, and then the shadow color. Now's the time I can think about this edge a little bit if, it, if I need to soften the edge. And I, I kind of wish I had the shadow a little more clearly defined, so I am going to make it a little darker. Yeah, I just needed that. And this one, yeah, this one too. This, the darkest shadow of the back lemon can be the light area of the warm lemon. Let's see how that works. Brush is too big. Kind of working. This is my warm shadow color again. Most important thing is the value, is getting it dark enough. Okay, and then I wanna blend this a little bit, this edge right here before this dries on me. Same thing with this. Okay, and there's, there's just a little bit more yellow showing right here. It's almost reflected light, but I'm gonna really go for this um, cool yellow here. Get that in there a little bit more. It's a little bit dotty almost. You know, the lemon skins do have a little bit of texture. I'm at the point now where I'm starting to just kind of dot a little bit of texture in there. So this is like a slightly lighter value that I'm dotting in, in the shadow.
same thing with the warm. Slightly lighter value and just kind of breaking this up with little dots. But only do this after you've got your values laid in. You know, and you might need to just kind of step back and, you know, look and see if it's got form happening or not. Like I probably could soften that just a little bit more. Um, yeah, let's just soften that just a little bit with almost a half tone kind of shade in here. I do have this like reflected light coming in here on this part of the lemon and then it kind of comes around this way. And all of this is reflected light down here. So I think you can, yeah, I think you can catch that. And then um, there's just a hint of reflected light here too to help define this edge of this lemon against that back lemon. So I need this just a little bit darker. On this back lemon. And also right here, there's just kind of a little dark triangle right here. So now it's just a matter of, you know, blending and softening edges and you know once you kind of have the right value established on there okay so i really like that feeling of reflected light but yet it's still in the shadow and now i can do the um the highlight part of this lemon and i actually do see white highlights on a lemon um i might i think i'm going to use this mixture that's um it's warm yellow and cool yellow and white <laughs> so that it's a little bit lighter you know a little bit lighter Let's do um, some more white. And just start adding these little white dots to this highlight area. They're only white right where the highlight is. And the rest are little shadow dimples, you know. So you can you can decide how far you wanna go with that. You know, maybe even these the cool 
the cool lemon shadow color from the back lemons. You could try putting on your front lemon here. Maybe it needs to be darker. Try a few different values, see what works. This might be too dark. And you don't, you want to simplify. You don't need as many as you think. I mean, that's probably enough. I think just adding that right there really helped a lot. So now I want to move on to the, um, the pattern on the bowl a little bit, okay? So, I mean, I've got my bowl value in there. The, the, you know, it's, it's blended, it's done. You know, the, the white part of the bowl is done. But what I need to do now is add a little bit of that pattern. So on my reference, it's blue. So I'm gonna use the same, you know, ultramarine blue that I've been using and my gray and just kind of come up with a middle value. I don't know if I have enough. So right away it's gonna be very harmonious because I'm using all the same, you know, same color. I don't know how this value will look. There's some, you know, there's some light flowers, some dark flowers. So I'm just gonna kind of put a few flowers in first. Just simple, you know, five petal flowers. saw three of them here right add a little bit of water to this okay and then I see um, you know a leaf another one over here just simple strokes I'm gonna make a slightly lighter shade now over on this side because it would be just a little bit lighter. How about some, some lines here and there? You want some of this color to go off and go to the edge of the bowl. Otherwise it won't look right. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I have various shades of blue, a couple different values, and I'm looking at different you know different strokes and but I'm really simplifying and then over here it really does get darker so I'm making making a darker purple some water in here and it's kind of a whole um, shape really that I see here so I'm just gonna simplify that shape it kind of just looks like a big flower going off the edge or something Again, a slightly different shade. Come in and do a few more strokes here and there. Now that I've got this slightly different dark shade, maybe just add a little bit of stuff here and there. Have a line going off the edge. You know, there's lines, there's all kinds of different things going on. There is a big flower here. So I am, I am putting that in. Go back and put some slightly darker values even on this side. And now 
that's really about it, I think. Getting pretty close. I ran out of ultramarine blue. I probably should go grab some more, but I don't know that I really need it. So I like how this just all kind of goes with my background. Oh, no problem, Patsy. Yeah, come back and watch it later. Now I can use my finger and soften anything that just looks a little too, I don't know, powerful. Don't, don't be afraid to do that. And um, so now I'm ready to add the, the white, white highlight um, on the bowl. You know, maybe right here. Maybe right here, there's a little, a little bit more white just to kind of make an edge pop or something. Oh, and then I'm painting this lip in too. A little bit better. This could be just a little bit lighter here, but it's not white, white. shouldn't have done that <laughs> yeah I don't really want blue there do I No, I don't think so so that's okay I can remove that got a little too creative the blue just does not look good in this on the warm side you know so just wet it and lift it Sometimes you can just lift, you know, with your paper towel. And yeah, there is a hint of like a reflected light right here. going to blend in and really that's I think that's it I mean I think that's pretty good um, of course I haven't stood back from it to compare it or anything but I think it's looking pretty good um, that line right there got a little bit thick and again I can go back and grab my um, I think I used uh, the gray neutral gray eight you know and just come back in and kind of redefine that a little bit and actually the gray looks good putting a little bits of gray here and there on the on the pattern too go back in and add light parts back in you know or not you can soften parts um, and then um, center of interest wise I probably could get a little more oomph right there you know right where my highlight is I think 
you know, and really accentuate that right there with that, you know, really pure yellow. Right up against the white bowl and right up against that highlight. Just gives it a little bit more pop. You'd be surprised just to, you know, sometimes just another layer of a transparent color on top of. It, it really, it can really help it. I do that with reds. So I just went over that, just hit that again with another layer of my yellow. And um, I, I think I actually want to warm up this back one just a tiny bit too, right here. And just kind of blend it out. Because it does have a little bit of the warmth of the light coming in there. But that one there, Actually, this one does too, right here. I got it on the rim of my bowl, darn it. So just a little, it's almost like a glaze I'm doing now, just to give the yellow a little bit more power. Because, you know, yellow is so weak and uh, there's nothing wrong with putting two or three layers of a yellow or a red when you need to, you know. Sometimes you just have to do that and you may not realize, you don't know that it needs it until you put it on there and you see what a difference it makes. You know, that's that's one thing I, uh, so I know that you guys, um, Denise actually sometimes, hi Denise. Denise sometimes give me a, gives me a hard time that I go back and, and change things, but that's how I've discovered cool, cool, cool stuff, you know, is by going back and trying something else, you know. And, you know, like what would happen if I made this red, another layer of red on there, you know, stuff like that. had to re-hit that with that and it's uh, kind of showing. All right. I don't know. I think it looks pretty good. I hope you guys will try this and, and by all means, if you have any questions, um, you know, please let me know. So yeah, I'm going to stand back from this and evaluate it. I'm kind of feeling like maybe this is still just a little too um, light. Maybe not though. I'm, I'm gonna look at compared to this. Maybe not. No, maybe it's okay. I think what it is is that there's this big pattern. Maybe I'll bring the pattern down a little bit more. Cause it's throwing something's throwing me off there. There, that's better. Just kind of fudge that in there, soften this a little bit. Yeah, I like that better. I softened that a little bit. All right, you guys, that's it. Thank you so much for being here and I can't wait to see yours. And by all means, let me know if you have any questions. Bye.